Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. It is August the 24th, 2024, and uh, Telegram CEO Pavel Durov has been arrested at a French airport. Of course, many of you guys already know him, as it says right here in the article, Telegram CEO. He is uh, not only that, but also VK, VK, a Russian app in the Russian Federation there that is very popular as well been detained in France. And of course, the question uh, I'm sure on many people's mind is why. We'll go into that in just a moment here. We're also going to be taking a look at the situation in Ukraine. Uh, also, Chinese soldiers actually coming in to, 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 the, uh, to the game there now. American mercenaries killed on the front lines there as they enter into the Kursk region of Russia. Uh, tanks pouring into the country of Ukraine from Russia, the T-90, the feared tanks there. Israel also, uh, no change will be coming up in the policy with the U.S. regardless of who becomes president. And of course, this particular doctor right here, uh, who visits the front lines in Gaza, what he saw that horrified his very eyes there. Let's go back to the top story breaking right now around the world. Everyone hearing about the arrest of uh, Mr. Uh, Durov here in Russia already. Uh, a top MP figure there in Russia is re requesting that France released the Telegram founder there. Uh, this uh, th this MP uh, is right here, this guy here, uh, Devanakov, uh, who is uh, at the State Duma session in Moscow on May 21st, 2024. And uh, that's when the picture was taken there. It says, Russia must demand the immediate release of Telegram founder Pavel Durov, who has been reportedly detained in France, Deputy Speaker of the Russian State Duma, uh, Vladislav Davanovkov, has said. According to the French media, the 39-year-old dual French uh, national was detained on Saturday at the Paris La uh, Bourguette Airport. The French authorities reportedly believe that the lax moderation rules and encryption te uh, technology had allowed the widespread use of Telegram Messenger by criminals. Hmm. So it's his fault, right? I got it. Okay, we need to get him out of there, they said. Uh, I have urged Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to appeal to the French authorities to release Pavel, Pavel Durov from custody. The politician wrote on Telegram, his arrest could be politically motivated and used to gain access to personal information of Telegram uh, users. We cannot allow this. Kudos to the Russian Federation uh, for an MP figure actually standing for freedom of speech. Uh, I am... Very, very pleased to hear that. In fact, I need to reach out to this guy here, try to get him on Israeli News Live. It'd be amazing to have uh, a man like that speaking of uh, freedom of speech values there. It's just, it's really amazing. But uh, here's the real reason why I think they're after Mr. Durov. How many of you guys remember this story uh, also? Telegram channel of uh, DDoS secrets shut down shortly after publication of Israeli Ministry of Justice leak. Eh, tell you what, Telegram, Durov, you are on the target list of Israel is what you are on. And uh, this is why the French authorities are arresting you. The Telegram channel distributor denial of secrets... A journalist collective specialized in publication of hacked material online was shut down after sharing more than one million leaked documents from the Israeli Ministry of Justice. Of course, they claim that the leaked uh, documents reportedly released in April released personal details of senior officials in the ministry. <laughs> they also uh, allege here show that the Israel seized and suppressed state secrets contained in lawsuits against the Israeli spyware vendor NSO Group. And last week, the Guardian revealed, thanks to more documents from the leak, that the Israeli officials tried to circumvent a foreign agent law in the U.S. as part of their pro-Israel advocacy efforts there. Wow. You mean to tell me that Israel really is controlling American political interest? I don't think that's ever stopped. Uh, but anyway, the leak is also letting us know this here for sure. Uh, 
Let's move on though and other news here as well. This here, the Chinese uh, uh, have now got their troops up to 18,000 personnel have landed in Russia. They're going to be fighting on the front lines uh, with Russian troops there. And that leaked information is coming out, but it's no surprise U.S. soldiers, pictures of U.S. soldiers inside of uh, Russia. These uh, American soldiers were part of the advancement there, 60 militants destroyed in what Russia is calling a failed attack. The Ukrainians are saying it's a success. Fighting in the area has continued with Russian forces destroying Ukrainian units and preventing them from establishing a foothold in the village's area. A uh, lot of U.S. Uh, military hardware has been seen being destroyed, but that's really nothing special in my opinion because we already know that Ukraine was also given U.S. weapons uh, there in the territory. But interestingly, though, they're showing pictures of American fighters, at least allegedly showing pictures of American fighters there inside of Russia. But uh, we don't really know where the pictures were taken at or... Uh, what the case may be this, unless maybe it was on one of the soldiers that was killed in the battle. No one really knows for sure as of right now. Uh, also, too, a heavily loaded train carrying Russian deadliest tanks, the T-90s, is uh, making its way to the front line to support the Russian uh, defenders, according to the post here, against the fight against the Nazis in Ukraine. Glory to the heroes they write in their post here. Not so much worried about the, the different rhetoric from either side, for that matter, but uh, it does show the T-90 uh, tanks there. This is definitely, supposedly, one of Russia's deadliest tanks. And I think not only for the sake of Ukraine, but Russia also now bringing out this specialized hardware uh, with uh, American uh, supplied weapons using those to penetrate into the Russian territory. So Russia now not playing games any longer when it comes to the situation inside of Ukraine there. Uh, U.S. to continue supporting Israel under the next U.S. administration, according to the Abbas advisor there. Uh, he stated, so if you ask me, you know what's really the best way in order for, uh, for Israel to stop its atrocity against the Palestinian people? I would say sanctions, he says. Now, is that really feasible? You know, under the current situation where the U.S. is shielding and sheltering Israel? Obviously not, he said in uh, this. I don't know if that was too Sputnik or not, but uh, that's what uh, Mr. Al uh, Maliki uh, statement uh, Abbas uh, supporter there. This is something I wanted to play a little clip for you of here. We won't play the full four minutes, but I'll put it in the link for you below there. A doctor uh, uh, who is a who's been on uh, who was in Gaza recently came back from Gaza, who has been in many many fronts of wars and tragedies and and landslides. In fact, we got floods and everything else going on all over the country, all over the world. In fact, uh, hopefully we will get a video up. I do want to do a special broadcast for Patreon tomorrow morning. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Uh, and I want to share with you guys a special broadcast on these different weather events that are happening right now. Uh, maybe a little different look that we might take a look at on there. Uh, that may be an exclusive for Patreon. Also, we have a couple of more interviews coming up. They'll be airing on Patreon first. Uh, these will be abducting, ab abducted, abduction videos. One you've never heard before, as far as I know, nowhere publicly. The other one will be Ted Rice. I'll be having Ted on here on Israeli News Live. Again, it'll be on Patreon first. For those of you that want to be able to catch a sneak peek, go and subscribe there. It'll be up uh, before too long. We have not set the date yet, but I think it will be very soon that that interview will be taking place there. Let's listen to the doctor here. Are you in Gaza? End of April for the first couple weeks of May. Dr. Mark Perlmutter, an orthopedic surgeon from North Carolina and vice president of the International College of Surgeons, volunteered in Gaza. So of all the disaster zones you've seen, how does Gaza compare? All of the dis disasters I've seen combined, combined, 40 mission trips, 30 years, ground zero, 
earthquakes, all of that combined doesn't equal the level of carnage that I saw against civilians in just my first week in Gaza. And when you say civilians, is it mostly children? Almost exclusively children. I've never seen that before. Never seen that. I've seen more incinerated children than I've ever seen in my entire life combined. I've seen more shredded children in just the first week. Shredded? Shredded. What do you mean? Missing body parts, being crushed by buildings, the greatest majority, or bomb explosions, the next greatest majority. We've taken shrapnel as big as my thumb out of eight-year-olds, and then there's sniper bullets. I had children that were shot twice. Wait, you're saying that children in Gaza are being shot by snipers? Definitively. I have two children that I had photographs of that were shot so perfectly in the chest I couldn't put my stethoscope over their heart more accurately and directly on the side of the head in the same child. No toddler gets shot twice by mistake by the world's best sniper. And they're dead center shots. In fact, more than 20 doctors recently in Gaza also told Sunday morning about gunshot wounds to children. One American doctor told us he even reviewed CT scans to confirm what he saw because he, quote, didn't believe that this many children could be admitted to a single hospital with gunshot wounds to the head. Some shootings have been captured on video. The Israel Defense Forces declined our requests for an on-camera interview. But in an email, a spokesperson told CBS News, quote, the IDF has never and will never deliberately target children, adding, quote, remaining in an active combat zone has inherent risks. And the IDF stressed that it calls for the evacuation of civilians from combat zones. And just in stating on that issue there where they talk about evacuating from combat zones, the poor people, they can't get from one location to the next before Israel turns around and issues another evacuation order. So as soon as they evacuate one alleged safe zone, they get to the new quote-unquote safe zone, and Israel's already posting a demand to leave that zone and go to a, another zone. It is intentional targeting of the civilian population trying to wear them down 10 months and the resilience of the Palestinian people still remains unbelievably defiant. I tell you what, I, I, I can't, my, I have no words to say. But someone has to make a stand to stop Israel from slaughtering these people. Because not even the God of Israel can get them to stop. Not even the calls that God said to Moses, when you come into the land, do not oppress the stranger among you. Israel would defend and say that October the 7th is the reason why they had to go after Hamas. You did not have to go after Hamas the way you did. And you know that. Not to mention, it is certainly suspicious at best that Hamas was able to gain access into Israel undetected as they did. So there's a lot of questions still unanswered. Even the Egyptians releasing information that you had more than two weeks notice. Even knowing how many hostages were planned to be taken. It is definitely a systematic genocide. And to make matters worse, Israelis work on social media to get you to believe the lies that are being reported around the it world. It is well known nowadays that what happens on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube has great influence on events as they occur on the ground. The internet, too, is a battleground. It is thus comforting to learn that the IDF employs soldiers whose job titles are new to the military world. The IDF now has soldiers who tweet, share, like and more. I just wrote a tweet about how many uh, suspected uh, terrorists were arrested in the West Bank last night. Um, about every day we update the Twitter first thing in the morning how many were arrested and I just wrote a tweet about it. 
What kind of uh, comments do you get to that kind of tweet? For the most part, we get retweets, uh, which are basically when the user takes what we tweeted out and they make it their status on Twitter. Um, and then most of the comments we get are very polarizing. We get very positive comments like, good job, and then we get very negative comments. We meet the soldiers of the IDF Spokesman's Unit New Media Desk on another routine day. The thing is, is they are very actively trying to control the media narrative, especially with the media being flooded with people showing you what's really going on on the ground inside of Israel. So Israel has had to bring in their own soldiers to do thousands and thousands of tweets daily to make sure that you believe the propaganda is the way they would like for you to see it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, the truth on Israeli news. Sadly enough. But the thing is, keep in mind, not all Israelis are for such tragic ends to Gaza. Good evening.